Next up is our home page. Let's create the home page using the Angular CLI again. Each page of our application is going to be a component, just like the header and the footer are components. Our main overall application is a component. Our home page will also be a component. NGG component home. Nice. Updated in app module.ts as well. And we have our home page. Let's make sure we run ng serve since I think we canceled it in the last lesson. All right, so that's running. Let's make sure we can use our home page. Let's open up home.component.ts. We have app dash home is our custom selector. So we'll go into app component.ts, which is our overall app component, and we'll say app dash home. And we put this above our router outlet right below our app header. Save that. And what's going on here? Compiled successfully. Save. This isn't getting updated. We have to refresh so that Webpack Dev Server knows that it needs to refresh that page. Okay, so we have app home. Home works. Very nice. Now let's go into our home page and actually build this out. So notice we're back in our template for our home.component. Now we can do anything we want here, right? We can write in whatever is on our home page. But here we're going to use Bulma's hero layout. So if we go over here, nav bar, let's go under docs, elements, or sorry, it's under layout, hero. Here is a default hero, a lot of boilerplates. Let's do this one right here. So we'll copy section, come back over, and we'll paste this right into the template. All right, so that's a lot of HTML there, but most of this is just Bulma classes to get good formatting. Hero is primary, gets us that nice color background here. Hero body is how Bulma separates out the middle part. Container, make sure it's not full width. It is only constrained to a certain grid. And then we have title and subtitle, but let's just delete the subtitle and say my home page. So as soon as we save, our browser got updated. And here is our hero section. Now what's cool about Bulma is we can also say is bold, give it a little gradient. Little gradient there, you can say is full height and that gets it to be full height. Now the next thing I wanna do is, this is a little bit bland. Well, let's give this has text centered so we can center it. All right, and notice we're doing a lot of stuff here just with some pre-built Bulma classes. We don't even have to write our own custom CSS. And I think that's good when you're using CSS frameworks is you can kind of keep your CSS clean at the expense of a little bit more classes in your HTML. I think it's also helpful too, because if you pass this project off to another developer that you're working with, they can just go reference those docs instead of having to read through your HTML or your CSS and figuring out what is styling. Now, the next thing I wanna do is add a background image to this because that's kind of how the websites are working these days. Giant header images, hero images. So we'll go to pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And go ahead and pick a good one from your background, whatever you like here. I'm gonna pick this first green one. Free download, we'll download that. And then let's open folder. I'll rename this to green. And then like we did before, let's put this in our assets folder. So we go Batcave, my Angular site, source, assets. Oh, and under image is where we want it. Okay, now let's use this in our HTML home components, well, not in our HTML, actually, I wanna use this as the background image. And the reason I do that is because the background image will constrain itself to the width of this hero section. So under styles, let's do ES6 backticks, hero, background image is URL. And the cool thing about this is forward slash assets, we're doing everything from the source folder, image, canyon, sorry, green, Dot jpeg and I have the eg in there and let's make sure that's set to important to override Bulma's classes background size is cover so we can go left to right and background position is center center all right so that works not bad 
All right, so now we've used images in our logo as an image tag directly and as a background image. Now I wanna show you something cool about how Angular handles styles in our components. Now the cool thing about components is that when you build them, they should be completely compartmentalized that styles don't bleed out, JavaScript variables don't bleed out into other components. And that's what makes components so valuable is they are their own modular part of our application. So styles here, I just tagged the hero section, but what if we have other hero classes across our entire application? Let's take a look at right-click inspect here and see what the Angular CLI did for us, what Angular does for us actually. So we have this custom attributes here, ng-host-co, ng-content-co, ng-content-co, and what this means is that Angular is applying this attribute to our HTML. And if we look at this hero, Hero, and we, this is what we added our background image to. Notice it does hero ng content co. So it targets that hero specifically, not any other hero sections, only this hero section in this specific component. And this way it ensures that this style doesn't bleed out into other components, makes it really helpful to make these components compartmentalized. Very cool feature of Angular. And that's going to be it for our homepage. Let's move on. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant. Let's zoom out a little. Okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now, declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services. And Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really, an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator. And a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here. We're just adding a decorator here. So this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site. The way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng-serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even gonna need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are gonna get output to. And we're gonna say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. 
save, and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular, CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack dev server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? You can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use. And here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click save, Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say, component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay, well, let's try a component. Okay, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal, no errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use components? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is gonna be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app. 